continue in a, a summer long series that we are calling uh, uh, Revolutionary Living. It is a walk through the book of Acts and uh, we are, uh, you know, continuing this whole kind of uh, uh, exploration about what does it mean to live our lives in such radical and revolutionary ways that it is a compelling case for people to come and take a hard look at the life, the work, and the ministry, and the message, and certainly the salvation that Jesus brings to us. So Acts chapter number four is where we will start. Uh, when you have it, say, I got it. All right, we're going to just read uh, uh, maybe the first, uh, you know, 10 or so verses. Now, I want to just remind you that this is a continuation. This actual chapter is a continuation of the sermon that I preached a couple weeks ago uh, where uh, Jesus, I'm sorry, Peter and John had healed this man who was sitting at the gate, beautiful temple. Y'all remember that story? And he was asking them for money. And he said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. And the, and the guy got up and he started running and jumping. Y'all remember that sermon two weeks ago? Amen. Man, I barely remember myself. It's okay. Praise God. Um, but, uh, but this is a continuation of that story. All right? And uh, we're going to uh, dig deep and, and look a little bit, not only at this chapter, but really think about all of the different messages that these first four chapters of the book of Acts give to us. So let's start. Verse number one. Uh, Acts chapter 4 says, While Peter and John were speaking to the temple, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came to them much annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them. They arrested Peter and John for preaching, all right? And, and, and they put them in custody until the next day, for it was already the evening. But many of those who heard the word believed. And they numbered about 5,000. So the next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled, assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Talking about heal. Uh, this young man. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whom you crucified, whom God rose from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that, the, that was rejected by you, the builders, and has now become the chief cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals whereby we can be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized that they had been with Jesus. Other verses says, recognized that they were companions of Jesus. The word of God for us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. Thank you, God. So today we're going to continue in a series on revolutionary living five ways to know you've been with Jesus. Five ways to know you've been with Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to bless the word of God that is read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our heart so we will not sin against you. Please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Ask your neighbor, when was the last time you hung out with Jesus? <laughs> now, let me first start off by saying that hanging out with Jesus is not the same as coming to church. Amen. So if this is your check the box for hanging out with Jesus, then uh, you, 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 you got it all messed up, all right? Because how many of you know that uh, while Jesus is here, and I, I, I'm not disputing the fact that Jesus is here, 
uh, hanging out with Jesus is more uh, impactful and powerful than what I'm talking about happens beyond your Sunday service attendance. Amen. Uh, that hanging out with Jesus is 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 a daily a daily uh, way of life. That to hang out with Jesus is to spend time with Jesus, to be in the presence of Jesus, to learn about who He is, learn about His ways in in such a a intentional manner that He begins to be reflected in your life. Now, why is this such an important uh, question, or why is this such an important uh, 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 thing to to ponder? Um, I want to submit to you that we all are hanging out with certain folk. We are all being influenced by certain things, and it is not the case that you're just hanging out by yourself. Hello, somebody. I mean, I know we're all radically individual people up in here. We, we, we make our own way. We make our own decisions. We go our own way. Any of y'all folk like that? I mean, I, I don't even know why. You know, it's kind of you know, narrative that we like to buy into. But how many of you know that we are all influenced by somebody? Whether we want to admit it or not, we are all deeply Drinking and drawing information and ideas from the wells of someone or something that is external to you. External to me. But in many re re uh, regards, you and I have to make some decisions about how we will spend the limited time we have, not only every day, but the limited time you have on this earth. How will you spend that time? And with who will you spend your time? And how will the time spent change or transform your life? Now, us coming to church is one of the great disciplines that help create some of this agitation. Because how many of you know we don't grow without agitation? We don't grow. Amen. You know, you, 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 you don't you don't become mature without some folks. You know, uh, bringing up things that, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of highlight the dissonance that may be at work in our lives. Now, you know, there are a couple of prerequisites, though, that I just want to give all a zealous folk who love to kind of speak un uninvitedly in people's lives. You know, a lot of us free with a lot of free advice, you know, but can't never take none of our own advice. You ever heard anybody like that? You know, always can tell you what's wrong with your life. But you know, can't even understand it. They dragging their leg down the street, you know, like asking why you live. Like, well, why are you dragging your leg? I'm not dragging my leg. You ever heard like that? I don't know. They, maybe it's just the people I hang out with. Always got to like, Ron, you should do this. Eat this. Go here. Don't do that. I'm like, well, what, what about you? Uh, you know, have you learned my, you know, you know my last name, you know my first name? And so, tell your neighbor, don't, don't talk to me at least till you learn my full name. Amen. I mean, keep your free advice to yourself, praise God. But, 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 but it is indeed, I think, the case that relationships allow for depth. Right? Deep engagement about the most important things in our lives. And I want to submit to you today that part of what hanging out with Jesus is really about is going deep into the parts of your lives that you have to kind of keep out signs. You know, you know, you, you, I mean, I'm trying to make, break this down. You ever seen a keep out sign? Or beware of a dog? You ever seen that? It's like, you know, now, if you, if you kind of, you know, move past the keep out sign or you, go past the door that says wherever dog, then the message to, to from the owner is like what? You you get you get what you deserve. Man, there might be a hot one on the other side of this door. There might be, you know, a chunk of flesh that this dog's gonna take out your leg, right? That the keep out sign, the beware the dog sign, it is it is a place where you're trying to repel folk. But when you're hanging out with Jesus, 
I want to submit to you that Jesus wants to get past your keep out sign. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not afraid of your beware of the dog sign. Hello, somebody. And this is, this is why Jesus matters. He, he, he don't matter uh, in the narrow way that we see religion and faith played out on the TV. More than he matters about the ways in which he wants to penetrate the deepest parts of who we are as a people, as a culture, as individuals, as a nation, as a world, as the created order that Jesus matters. And if we can hang out with Jesus, Jesus will begin to transform us from who we are today to who he intended for us to be in eternity when we were originally created. Because how many of you know uh, creation has taken a huge fall? Amen. When God dreamed of a created universe, God did not have in God's original intent that we would be killing each other. That babies would be dying. That, 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 uh, you know, folks would be selling their bodies on the streets. That people would have so much money that rather than sharing it with, you know, just say your family. <laughs> or maybe people in your church who are in need. Rather than doing that, you hide money in accounts all over the world. So you ain't got to pay taxes or whatever, right? But God, didn't, God didn't create the world so we could be greedy and selfish and self-destructive. So Jesus comes to correct and penetrate deeply the dysfunction of our world. And hanging out with Jesus then creates a certain kind of transformation that is triggered in each and every one of us. And I want to submit to you today that when you hang out with Jesus, you are automatically initiated into a revolutionary way of life. Now, everybody wants to be a revolutionary, but don't, don't nobody want to live revolutionary. You know, we, 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 you know, we here in the Bay Area, and everybody's revolutionary. Revolutionary about everything. I'm revolutionary about the environment. I'm revolutionary about animals. I'm revolutionary about education. I'm revolutionary about gun violence. I'm revolutionary about, you know, uh, the waterfront. I'm revolutionary about the Iron Triangle. I'm revolutionary about being an American. I'm revolutionary about being black. Right, you know? Everybody's revolutionary, but don't nobody want to live in a radically changed way. And I want to submit to you today that one of the great gifts of this book of Acts that we've read is that it is a chronicle, it is a narrative, it is a story of the continuous revolutionary and breaking of the kingdom of God. That God's kingdom came to the world not so the world could stay the same. Not so you could stay the same. But Jesus came to seek and save those who are lost. And what's the interesting about being lost is that, you know, when you first kind of are lost, you don't know you lost. Amen. How many ever been driving somewhere and you just knew you knew where you was going? You know, you just, oh, maybe it's just this way. It's the turn. Oh, oh, no, I'm going to retrace my steps and you just all turn around. Then it takes a little bit of while for you to realize you lost, right? You know, I'm just going to here today. I mean, I don't mean no harm. Praise God. Amen. How many get lost even with navigation? You know that's a shame, right? That's telling you, I was, I was driving. We was driving in, in Maryland on our way to some retreat. And we driving and the thing said, make a right. We made a right. It said, make a left. And we made a left. And it said, drive straight. And we drove straight. And then the, 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 the navigation just got blank. And the road ran out. And I thought I heard the navigation say, turn around, fool, you get close to the crocodile. You know, it's just like, you know, navigation is supposed to help you. But even with navigation, this just shows you how lost humanity is. That even with directions, we still find them. Preach. Tell you that even with directions, you still get lost. Some of y'all is just too high and mighty. You ain't never get lost. I always want to go. But for the 
comes to put us back on the right road. And this is why hanging out with Jesus is so important. Because you and I will rarely know we're lost until we get around those who are found. Man, this ain't, this ain't even in my notes. I don't miss <laughs> And you know that 
they could not do if they just stayed in their own kind of capacity. I want to let you know, child of God, you're trying to be a better husband, trying to be a better father, trying to be a better mother, trying to be a better wife, trying to be a better friend, trying to be a better boo, trying to be a better, a, 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 a better worker, trying to be a better aunt, whatever you try to be, you cannot fulfill your assignment unless you are filled with God. So, what are the kind of things that may cause you to get filled up with God? I don't know. Whenever there's like, I don't know, a consecration, um, that may be a great opportunity. <laughs> for you to be filled with God. Because a consecration, uh, it, 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 it says that God, I am understanding that if I'm going to change, I need to change some practices and behaviors in my life. And what better way to do that than to engage in some practices that radically alter the way you're living? What would it look like if rather than watching, you know, the repeat of Scandal, because you've seen all of the episodes. <laughs> Enough. So we're very timid. 
And you know, I know it's hard. Here in the Bay Area, we are hearing and finding out that 5% of the people in the Bay Area attend church. So you are already like an abnormal person to a whole lot of folks. <laughs> and you already feel that, because you, you know, they ask you on what you doing on Sunday? Oh, you know, just want to hang out with some friends. <laughs> some of you know you like to tell folks, you go to church. You're like, they think you're crazy. You go to church? Ah! <laughs> you ever had that reaction? You know, somebody told you you go to church, and they just like, church? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to, to Brother Harry Belafonte, he was joking with me, and he, he, he asked what I did. I said, you know, I organized church in the past. He said, really? I thought they were extinct. <laughs> Not yet, praise God. You know, I know someone's working on it, amen. No, no but, but you know, that's a sentiment. All right? That a lot of people, particularly in this Bay Area, they think the church is a part of the problem. And because of that, we take on that timidity and we don't have boldness about who we are in God. Now, I want you to understand that being bold. Some of us here in Berkeley, we see the people, oh, you know, on, on, on the campus, and they standing out on a on a on a on a milk cart with a with a megaphone, and you know, hell, you're going to hell. I'm talking about the kind of boldness that when you hear God speak, you will act. That requires boldness, especially when the action means you have to step out of your comfort zone. I love, I love uh, uh, Bill Hybels. He he wrote a book called Listening to the Whispers, and he talked about how how you know he was uh, 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 learning how uh, to to respond immediately to the voice of God. And and he said that you know uh, he 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 was uh, taking his garbage out one day, and there was this guy across the street who uh, he knew was an atheist, and he known him for you know years, ten some years, and and he heard a whisper. You know, what you thought was, you know, the voice of God said, go across the street and talk to him. And Bill Hybels, you know, he, you know, you don't know who Bill Hybels is like this, you know, real famous kind of, you know, uh, pastor and whatnot, has a lot of little writings and things. And, 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 and so, the big church, 20-something thousand members, right? So, you know, this, this guy, you know, you think he'd be coming to talk to anybody, right? But he heard him like, go across the street. And, and he was like, what? Across the street? You know, you, know how, you know how some of us do when we hear God tell us to do something, you're like, no, 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 God tell you to pray, no, 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 us in a whisper. And boldness is being so convinced in who you believe that you will respond and leave the results up to God. I know that chasm between you 
Raising your children is large, but boldness requires for you to walk across the street. I know you don't really like, you don't really like to hang out with black folk, Latino folk, white folk, rich folk, poor folk, educated folk, your homies, your partners. But what would be something if you was like in a store, on your job, and a whisper told you just go to somebody and put your hand on say, God told me to tell you things on me. That's it. Because it's not about us, it's 
about the Spirit working on us. The longer you hang out, He will make you believe right. So come with your doubts. Come with your worries and your concerns. Don't hold anything back. How do you know? Jesus is not intimidated by our questions. Amen. Amen. I may be intimidated by it. Lord knows that a few of them are just, you know, rock them to the core. But I'm so glad I serve a God who is not. And it is that God that is welcoming you to hang out with him. Man, that feel good to me. Because I just I, I, I remember all the different places in my life, even right now. Where I'm transitioning from an unbelieving, God, you can't fix this, to a skeptic. Well, let's see here. What if I tried this? To a seeker. Wow, well, you know, let me actually look at a few options here. To a doubter. All right, now, I, I, I think I've honed in on something, but I'm not quite sure to a believer. You can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much about him. I'm going to never high five and tell him he's making a believer out of uh, me. The fourth way you know you're hanging out with Jesus, signs and wonders. You're expecting the impossible to happen. Yes. The longer you hang out with Jesus, you just expect things to happen that don't nobody else think is possible. You begin to lose the narrative in your mind of what people dictate to us is possible. Because you are understanding that hanging out with Jesus reminds me that I'm serving the one who says that through me, I can do all things. The longer you hang out with Jesus, you start, you know, blocking out folk to tell you why you can't. The longer you hang out with Jesus, you find in those people like the man who was at the beautiful gate that was sitting there lame and everybody said that, you know, I'm just going to give him money because that's all he needs. But when you hang out with Jesus, you begin to see beyond what you can give them. And you start to see that, man, through God, I can give them a whole lot more than a little bit of money.
He keeps telling you, be a good cheater. Yeah. You're an overcomer. Even when you're at, you, you, you're at your school trying to baby out that 25 page paper that you ain't read, study for. <laughs> Like a lot of folks are doing, taking their lives because of the pressure of achievement, you're reminding yourself, or the Spirit is reminding you because you're hanging out with Jesus. Be a good cheer. You're an overcomer. Your marriage is new, old, falling apart. And rather than you chasing the grass is green on the other side. You digging deep in your marriage that Come God yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. brought you two together. Yes, Lord. Be a good cheer. Because in this life you're going to have tribulations. But I'm going to come to work. Five ways you know you're hanging out with Jesus and he's hanging out with you. This consecration is an opportunity for all of us to test how much we're hanging out with God. How much God is hanging out with us? Amen. And I'm going to tell you, God is never not ready to hang out with you. Amen. God is not like, I'm too busy, sorry, try me next week. That's us. Yeah. <laughs> That's us. God be knocking on our door and we hide. We like Adam in the garden. Adam and Eve. God is walking through the garden, regular appointment. Where you at? And they hide behind the street says, big leaves. <laughs> Like big leaves. Can I hear from God? Make it play. Man, I got to preach a message on this. Man, I'm a bad people that don't come to both services or one or the other because I mean, the spirit be talking, but you know, ask your neighbor, what are your fig leaves? <laughs> you walk around here with a fig leaf. <laughs>